how are you my people tuko hapa na sinya grill yes na sinya grill tumekunywa breakfast mandazi sausage kila kitu we are waiting for nyama choma yes tunachoma mahali now <laughs> to make this story short we are here kama kawa felitox i'm going to be joined by one one amazing person who's changing the society somebody who's bit gone beyond his strength i can see his strength here is able differently is a friend of ours is a friend of mine categorically he's doing a lot of things in this society he's stood up to make a difference in the society kwa hivyo tunaenda kumuona ameketi tu mahali hapa nyuma kando sijui wapi but i'm telling you it's as a quiet and current and amazing story please welcome mr george and welcome to Philly Talks. Uh, what is it when you are focusing on your ability rather than your disability? Today I'm joined by one of my good friends who has pulled out of societal imposition to make a difference. And the difference of today's life and is also doing bigger in his love life. Kindly help me help welcome one of my good friends, George. George Ah, thank you for having me. Karibu Yes. Yeah, it's good to see you again, eh? <laughs> yeah, after a long while. It's I... been a minute. Yes, it has been. <laughs> Karibu sana. Ah, Santi. Yes. Yeah. Now, George, I want you just to introduce yourself. Maybe uh, we want to know more about your name. And uh, basically something just small about you like what is your real name? Tunakujua George sisi. My name is George Mololo. Uh, I am a father, a husband, mm -hmm. uh, but also career-wise, uh, I am a fine artist, mm -hmm. I am a teacher, mm -hmm. a historian, mm -hmm. and a lawyer. Yes. Yes. Ah, that's good. No, a lot of people just know you as um, an heart um, an person. Uh, for my life, I've known you to be a heart person. You love heart with all your heart. Is that a your career or it's, it's a talent? Uh, I can say it is both uh, a mixture of talent, mm -hmm. career, because mm -hmm. I've pursued it both ways. Mm -hmm. I've pursued it academically to mm -hmm. finality mm -hmm. and also it's something that I have great passion mm -hmm. in doing, so I have a lot of, I, I love doing art. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do you you to some of your work? you work? Um, I've been privileged to to do a lot of artworks, mm -hmm. uh, but I mostly specialize in sculpture. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been able to do to install three monuments mm -hmm. in Machakos County. Wow! That is uh, the mother and child at Machakos Level Five mm -hmm. Hospital. That all was done in back in 2015. Yes. Then I did. Uh, Mulumutisia mm -hmm. and Mwindimbingo, yes. they were commissioned on Mashujade 2016. Ah. So the, sorry, sorry to cut you short. So the commissions that were done in Machakos, basically it was your work? Yes, it was, your yes. Work. Yes, it was my work. Mm. Uh, and uh, later on I did uh, two monuments, thematic uh, mother and child. Mm -hmm at uh, Pumani Maternity Hospital. Yes. And uh, it was an interesting time because it, it came at a point whereby there was that lady who was breastfeeding her kid at one of the hotels in Nairobi mm -hmm. and she was asked to go and breastfeed in the toilet. Mm -hmm. And then there was a public outro about mm -hmm. that. Uh, and then when I got that job, I decided what a better way to to, to, to bring out a thematic concept yes. than to address that aspect that motherhood is natural. When a baby is breastfeeding, the baby is eating that's basic need. And if anybody is seeing something else, mm -hmm. that is perversion of that person. Mm -hmm. The mother and the baby are innocent yes. and they are within their rights in a proper way. Yes, yes uh, that one I did it in 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last two, uh, 
project that I did recently, I did uh, Professor Wangare Mathai mm -hmm. and uh, Field Marshal Dedan Kemathi mm -hmm. for Nyeri County Government. Mm -hmm. And I can also say that I'm one of uh, those artists who does their project within short timeline and good professional work. You quite have a very beautiful story that everyone wants to hear about. And uh, when I look at you, it amazes me and can also amaze the world. You're expecting to see a George who is more connected, a George who is, huh, you know, but you, you chose to go to heart and beat all what people would say about you and work for yourself. What inspires you? Uh, what inspires me uh, is whereby I'm able to to use my aptitudes, mm -hmm. my talents, to communicate a message, mm -hmm. uh, a theme, mm -hmm. and paint it to the society. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's, it, 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 it is a great privilege whereby one can be able to, to, to use what they have learned mm -hmm. uh, in school and make an impact, communicate to the world. Mm -hmm. And also in, in doing that, also inspire other people because uh, there is, there, there is a, a perception uh, that the world uh, views persons with disability whereby a lot of people will have pity mm -hmm. instead of just empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, I try to prove to people that I am well abled. Uh, we, we call ourselves abled differently. Yes. And uh, what we just need from the society mm -hmm. is chance for us to prove our talents, our abilities. Mm -hmm. Have you yes. ever gone through a rejection at one given time? Uh, very many times. Mm -hmm. uh, very many times. Because mm -hmm. pe people will try to look at you from different sets of lenses. Mm -hmm. Whereby the moment you meet somebody, mm -hmm. they either categorize you to Either you are able to do A, B, C, D, or you are not able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, I've faced uh, a lot of rejections mm -hmm. with time. Uh, and I can also say, uh, even in dating, it was, it was challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, it was challenging because people will, in the, in the market field of souls, mm -hmm. uh, people would want uh, will we'll go into into love, into relationship, looking for how much they can benefit mm -hmm. out of it, yeah. not how much they can give. Because it's supposed to be every person giving 100%. Mm -hmm. It is not a 50-50 thing. Mm -hmm. It is everybody giving their best. And uh, when people are having like their checklist, or the bar that they have in terms of what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, you may find that a lot of people, they, 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 the ideal person they have at the back of their subconscious mind, mm -hmm. sometimes it becomes very difficult to match that with the actual person that is before you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've just raised a very nice uh, comment here about your dating life. Uh, let me take you back there. How was your dating life? Was it normal, like a normal one? How how are your friends treating you then? All the the girl now happens to your be your wife. Uh, okay, for my wife when we started dating, mm -hmm. uh, okay things went well because for me I believe in introducing myself for who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, but before then. Uh, there, there was a time uh, I used to use a prosthetic leg mm -hmm. and uh, most of the people who I grew up with because I was using uh, my prosthetic leg throughout throughout most people used to think that either I had an accident or something because uh, people thought that I was limping they didn't know that I'm an amputee mm -hmm. so there was an incident where there was a girl I was dating mm -hmm. And uh, we met severally when I had the prosthetic. Mm -hmm. 
and then it developed some problem and we had scheduler for a date yes. and I didn't want to stood her down, to stood her down, to stand her down eh? so I decided to go without oh my God. that was the end of the relationship what? <laughs> she freaked out she freaked out oh my god yes. yes. ile <laughs> nasemekananga kwa mata umeingia kwa hotel mtu akakuona akatoroka oh my god at that moment what was going through your mind uh, i think for me having 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 lived my life through this way hmm. for me the first one year was challenging but the moment i accepted this is who i am hmm. this is the challenge that i have yani huu ndio ule mtiani mungu amenipatia i live and i enjoy life to the fullest for me i made peace with that and uh, when that incident happened uh, for me it was okay uh, it was okay for me uh, i didn't have any hard feelings all that mm-hmm. uh, i figured out that uh, maybe it's a loss because you see life has a lot of up and downs a lot of challenges and all that and because what was going through my mind was that eh, sometimes you may meet and marry somebody when they are either good physically or even health wise or even psychologically mm. or emotionally but what if some point in life Sometimes. that challenge comes yes. you are faced with this person will, yes. will you walk away yes. and it's true i've had a lot of stories uh, a lot of friends that i have mm-hmm. uh, that got their disability when already in marriage or in a relationship and it ended so for me i was comfortable be- because I, w- I-, i was doing my dating when already i was first comfortable with myself mm-hmm. and uh from for my wife right now when we met mm-hmm. uh we met we met when i was on my crutches and all that and uh she was able to see me for who i am oh, for who you are yeah yes. quite interesting quite interesting uh for those who does not know george i know george you are not born like this uh it's something unfortunate that happened when you were growing up and uh, it was quite a transition uh between your normal life now to adopt a new life again from the whole to the new and um i've listened more about your story and uh, i want to just to talk something small about the transition and what happened on the transition just briefly uh i i when i was nine years old mm-hmm. uh i when i was walking to school at, at back at that uh, back in time mm-hmm. eh, our parents uh, where i was growing up parents uh wanted their kids to go to the school that was far away from their home mm. so that we could walk and all that i think it was also a nice way of also keeping the kids healthy yes. and uh, the school i think was around 3 4 kilometers away mm-hmm. or even more I, i can't recall but i was halfway going there and i got this sharp pain mm-hmm. and uh, that would make me black out yes uh, and uh, i remember uh, my best friend uh ran ahead to school and uh, told the teachers that uh, I've passed out somewhere then they came they carried me to school mm-hmm. and then they had to wait until uh time for going to school was uh, was there because we, we didn't have somebody at home my mother my mother went working my dad was also working somewhere so they had to wait until uh, working hours were done then the, the kids were sent to to call uh, my aunt actually my aunt was there and then she came to school and she carried me so when i was taken to the hospital i spent almost two three months without getting a diagnosis going from one hospital to the another to another they will do their tests and all that and they couldn't find uh, anything was wrong but yet i was in pain so i was admitted at kenyatta Uh, national hospital and uh, after undergoing uh, three major operation in the third operation they diagnosed that i had cancer mm-hmm. and uh, at that time it had spread all the way. it was one inch away from the hip hip joint uh, so 
uh, I was put under some medication mm -hmm. first to stop the spread and also for my body to, to recover uh, mm -hmm. the strength yes. uh, so that now I can face the knife again mm. uh, in the theater. Mm -hmm. So I was amputated. Uh, nobody told me, nobody prepared me. What? So I just, uh, I remember during the operation, mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of like, uh, I think I could see what they were doing. It was kind of like a, a horror movie. <laughs> um, and I remember I, wo I, I, I okay, conscious and pain. You know, wh when you are going for an operation, you are put under anesthesia. Yeah. And uh, when I was now being taken to the ward, now all this pain was coming. And then I looked and I couldn't see my second leg. And I was connected to these machines that some of the blood was still circulating. Okay, it, it was uh, a funny setup. And I remember it was one of the most difficult moments that I experienced. Uh, I was in denial, I couldn't believe it, I was not prepared. So I struggled with that alone. A lot, a lot, a lot. Especially that scene, uh, that first encounter. And even when I was discharged, now, uh, previously I used to be a good footballer, I used to run very fast, I was this healthy nine-year-old kid. And then all of a sudden, there I am, first I'm immobile because I had to stay uh, at home to heal because uh, uh, the, the, the hospital bills were getting so high. So I had to be discharged to heal at home. Uh, then I would go for radiotherapy sessions. And I had to use crutches. My first crutches were wooden, so heavy. The, sh the, you call the, the shoulder ones. Uh, the, yeah, and they were very heavy. Uh, I had to learn how to walk with them first, then got healed. Uh, then I started, I, I, I got my first prosthetic, it was extremely heavy. Uh, also learning to walk with it was also another terrible experience. <laughs> um, and then I was taken to uh, a boarding school, uh, a special school in Machakos. And I remember that contributed also to my acceptance because the moment, the, my first day in that school, I met other kids who had different uh, types of disabilities mm. and I felt guilty because I felt that I was way much better. Mm. Yes. So, yeah, within a year I had accepted um, uh, my new life and moved on. But unfortunately, the society, I found out that my biggest challenge was the society. Yes, and the perception they had. Uh, uh, we are going for a short break. Uh, it's quite a story. And um, as we are coming back, George will explain more of uh, the healing process and how we conquered the challenge. Thank you. Thank you and welcome back. George, quite a story, eh? <laughs> uh, <indeed it> is. <laughs> wow. Now, uh, George, it's quite um, inspiring how everything you took them positive and ukajitoa kwa ile, kikapu ya tu jifunikia uko. So I just want to uh, uh, just tell us all these challenges, how you overcame them, and what are you doing right now? And how do people see you when you do these monuments, you put them up there, the challenges that you go through? Actually, I, I, I love the look in people's eyes mm -hmm. uh, whenever I'm called upon mm -hmm. to do, uh, to undertake this project. Mm -hmm. Because there is an aspect of utter disbelief mm -hmm. whereby most people, they, 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 they don't even believe that I can do such work. Mm -hmm. And I do the work and then I go and install my monuments. And uh, people are surprised that I can 
climb heights. <laughs> uh, there with power drills and all my tools and install my work. And uh, I think that, okay, yeah, so you find that uh, most of the challenges are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can also say there's an economic uh, challenge that also comes mm -hmm. with uh, doing work mm -hmm. as a person with disability. Uh, you find that there are some other things mm -hmm. that I could have done, but because I'm using my crutches and all that, and you know, especially during the the monument making or the the process, uh, I can't. Uh, you know, I have to be also careful when I'm moving around the workshop and all that. And you find that there are some things that I'll have to get somebody uh, to assist with some things, and you know there'll be a financial implication to that because it's a project, it has a financial consideration, yes. and if you're getting somebody to do the work, uh, they can't just come to volunteer. Mm. And also it would not be right for me to, to have people come work for free. So you find that if, uh, if you compare my context and somebody else who is also able-bodied, uh, able mm. you'll find that there is a higher cost in doing work compared yes. to the other person. Yes. Yes. So th those are some of the challenges that I face. Mm -hmm. But most of the work I do it myself, especially mm -hmm. the concept part, the finer details, the finishing and the installation. Even the designs. Even the designs. I do that. But the works that uh, will not require a lot of... Uh, skill input, I'll have somebody do the work. Okay. Yes. Before you get this job, people may think that uh, you get them because you are able differently. Uh, we know Umesoma. Can you take us through your high school and university? Uh, I went, I went, uh, I attended uh, Mombasa Secondary School yes. uh, for the physically handicapped. It's a integrated mm -hmm. uh, special school in Mombasa. Yes. Integrated because we have borders and day scholars mm -hmm. and uh, the integration is it, it came through the Ministry of Education directive that uh, special schools are not supposed to be exclusive yes. for persons who, are, who have different challenges. Yes. That because the moment we finish school will need to be integrated back into the society. society yes. And uh, there the, the, the were statistics that were, or research that was carried out, mm -hmm. and it showed that uh, most students who are secluded, they find it hard to integrate back into the society. And that is true. Yeah, so that, that wisdom and that concept came at that time. So that school was integrated. We mm -hmm. had uh, able-bodied students, bo boarding, yes. and also day schooling, day school. and also we had uh, physically challenged students also doing day schooling, oh. and and it was it it was a, a good hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I did I did art mm -hmm. in high school, and actually I was the best art student, Coast oh. Province, wow. during our KCSE, mm -hmm. and uh, I proceeded to Kenyatta University, mm -hmm. where I did a bachelor's of education, okay. uh, fine art, wow. and history. <laughs> in fine art, I specialize in drawing, mm -hmm. painting, and sculpture. Yeah. And uh, and uh, later on, uh, after I finished KU, yeah. I went and did my bachelor's of law. When you are a lawyer, Camille, qualified? Eh? Uh, I'm a lawyer, not yet an advocate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have the undergraduate degree. Yes. Uh, but uh, planning to go for the uh, ATP advocate training program mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I delayed because I was trying to balance a lot of things. Yes. had a young family mm -hmm. uh, that came into the picture mm -hmm. and also some of this art project. Mm. Uh, once I get the, the job, the contractual obligation will give me a specific timeline. Uh, and if the work has to be done within three months, two months, six months, I I have to to complete the work, or I'll be or, or else I'll be in breach of the contract. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, George, you have a quite a, a story, and uh, now I've been warned about our time, and uh, it's quite interesting because I want to owe you more and more time in this show because uh, I want you to inspire a lot of people. Uh, there are two things here. Uh, number one, I just want you to encourage somebody, like talk to somebody who feel like they're giving up because of the condition that they are in, just to show them you made it and they can do it. Uh, first of all, uh, true insight and true uh, the real empowerment come from inside. You must first believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. You must first uh, identify mm -hmm. uh, your talent, your skills. And something else that I can say, life, life is challenging as it is. Uh, there is nowhere where we were promised that life would be easy. But all these challenges, they shape you to become a better person than you are. Amen. So what I could tell anybody who is facing different challenges and all that, uh, the, the, the life is a given and the way it is, it is a gift. Find a way to impact uh, positive, uh, to impact other people, find a way to learn something new every day, uh, invest in yourself, if there are opportunities whereby you can train yourself to get more skills, have them. And also the handwork skills, if you can have them. Because we have had a lot of job losses during this COVID, but a lot of people went back to their talents, went back to skills and all that, and they were able to make a living. And also you can balance your career and your talent. You just need to find, to, to, to find that gap. much, George. I'm looking forward for our next meeting. It's quite inspiring, and we have a lot that we've not talked about. Asandi sana kukukuja, and I want to welcome you. Today I'm offering people a very nice, I don't know we are going to have lunch or it's breakfast today, at Nasinya and Garden. You see the gardens are so beautiful. You can come with your children and play around here. It's quite so an ambience environment, and I, I really like it myself. So it is that for today with George, and I'm so happy that George has given his story. How many people are out there who have not given their story? He's able differently. And from that, he has made a change in the society. This is an awakening call to most of us and take life positively. Thank you.